Hello everybody and good evening. It's live on Saturday night from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about math today and in particular in this math show that happens every every Saturday night what we do is we talk about some math problem that I've been thinking about in my life recently and then we also use some of the time to answer any questions that anyone might have. As you may have been able to tell, the way that this, uh, this live stream started, we, we are actually trying to do a lot of different things at the moment, some of which are involved with trying to stop the spread of COVID-19. But nevertheless, it's always important to take some time and smell the math. I guess I should say do the math, right? So now today what we're going to do, the structure of the, of the program, is that the first few minutes will involve me sharing a question with you that is maybe more interesting than the, answer, than the first answer you might think of. And then what we'll do is I'll talk a little bit about how you go about thinking about a question like this. And then after that, uh, we'll open the rest of the time to just ask any questions that anyone might have about mathematics, about learning math, or about what you can do with math. If you have any specific math questions that you want to ask, like how to do a certain problem, for that, you should come back on the weekday live streams, which are 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. But on the weekend, we kind of answer more general things. All right. Is everyone ready? Uh, you may have watched me do a bunch of math counts problems this week. This problem that I want to talk about is not a math counts problem. It's a real problem. Let's try this. Here we go. Try this. You just finished writing a 10-page essay in 10-point font, 10-point single-spaced font, so 10-point with single spacing, when you just realized that you used the wrong formatting, and it was supposed to be 12-point double-spaced. How many pages will your essay end up being after you fix the size and the spacing? Now, this is a, this is a legit question. Maybe you have done this before, where you, uh, where you have tried to write some essay and you said, hmm, I'll use single spacing, or I'll use double spacing, or I'll change the font size and see what happens. Now, with a question like this, I want to share that what we're going to do is we're going to give people some time to think about this. All I did was introduce it so far. And then I'll also give some hints along the way. There's a reason why I chose this particular question. And I'll explain all of that thought process as we're going through and letting people think with these hints. So now, if you happen to be a parent or a coach and you're watching this, that part will be for you. If you happen to be a student, I encourage you to go and try to think about this problem. And in particular, I'm going to say that the answer to this question is not what it might seem to be at first. You see, I wouldn't give you a question that is super simple. There are, there are actually multiple ways to figure this out. One is actually to think, and that's what I'm hoping that you're doing. And in fact, the way I like to run all of these is to give a hint after a little while. Okay? So there will be a hint that we'll put up that might help you to understand all of this problem. And in fact, the problem, a lot of the problem is about reading the question. What do all of those words mean in this question? This question is here because I want to be able to teach that as you interpret a problem, the different interpretations you take can also cause you to possibly get different answers. And we are seeing different answers appearing in this chat. I wonder which one of them is right. You see, when you think about what happens when you go and make a document, let me go out of the way over here. What does double spacing mean? Double spacing doubles the vertical distance between successive text baselines. So what does that even mean? Well, you see these lines of text? These are some lines of text over here. Line, line, line. What's the baseline of a line of text? The baseline is as if you had, you, if you were in like kindergarten or first grade, it's that line that goes right across the bottom that all of the text is on. So what double spacing means is it doubles the space. All right, so it just doubles that space that's, uh, that happens to be between these lines. So if I double spaced this whole paragraph, then whenever I had that line, and then this line, it wouldn't be that way. In fact, there would be one line there, this would be empty, and the next line would be just right here. All right, so that's the first hint. And maybe I'll make a comment to parents or coaches who may be watching. Why is this question interesting? It's because the answer is surprising, and also because it turns out that this lets us think a little bit about geometry. 
here's something about geometry. The font size measures how tall the text characters are, and the width and spacing are going to scale proportionally. This is important. Do you know what 10-point font means? It means that the height of the letters are like 10-point. Maybe like if you looked at a capital T, that's a certain height. And 12-point font means that the T is not just taller, it's also wider. And so that T happens to be bigger in both the height and the width by some factor. That's the hint. And maybe at this point I'll also say, for, for parents and coaches who are watching, you can see that the reason why this problem was written this way is because by the second hint, hopefully now people will get the right answer. You see, the, the, the first hint just told us what the double spacing meant. The second hint tells you that maybe the answer is not going to be what you may have thought. Let's go and talk, through, talk this one through. Okay, how would you do a question like this? Well, really, there are two things going on, right? One of the things going on is that I had a 10-page essay. And this 10-page essay, it was going to be both changed from 10-point font to 12-point font. Just a second. 10-point font to 12-point font. And also, it would be from single spacing to double spacing. Let me grab something I used here, which is used to help make sure that if the computer freezes, we will be okay. Let's do this. So this is the single space to double space. Now I see that there's a bunch of people who have changed their answer. So the single space to double space, what that does, that's pretty clear, because it just means that if I had lines of text, then I would need twice as many lines of text, because you, know, you, you might have had the gap in between. On the other hand, what does the 10-point to the 12-point do? How do I think about this? If I go from 10-point font to 12-point font, here's a T. Imagine that that was the T in 10-point. Now, if that was the T at 10-point, what is the T at 12-point? It has to be taller, and also it has to be wider. Aha. Now, what's the right way to think about this? If I think about how much space, like how, 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 many, how many pages I'll need in order to write all of this thing down, you see, if it was only that it got taller, if it was only that it got taller from the 10 point to the 12 point, then I would just say that all of my lines got stretched out. Do you know what I mean? If I imagine that what I did is I had lines of text that said, hello. And if the only thing I did is I stretched it vertically, then I would get something like this. Does that make sense to people? It's just a vertical stretch. So if you do just a vertical stretch, then the amount of space that you're going to take up on your page will multiply by the ratio 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2. So from the vertical stretch, It multiplies by 1.2. Okay? And then what happens with the horizontal stretch? That's the second piece. The horizontal stretch is that I'm seeing that somebody has asked a question. Oh, that's interesting. Did I get the, pa did I get the pages wrong? So I see that somebody has just put a, a, a question inside here about written the 15 pages report. Actually, the problem is about a 10 page report. So let's, let's keep doing it with the 10 pages, right? So we have a 10 page essay. And with the 10, 10 page essay, this happens to be uh, to, to 1.2. And then the horizontal, what happens with the horizontal stretch? Horizontal stretch, it's also going to be a times 1.2. And that's because each of your letters is also somehow wider. So now if you're both wider and taller, what happens? You have to multiply both of them. So it's times 1.2 times 1.2. What does the double space do? Well, the double space is obvious. The double space is going to do times 2. So now when you put everything together, what's the multiplication factor that you get? Let's combine everything. 1.2 times 1.2 is 1.44 times another 2 is times 2.88. So what that means is if you actually had a 10-page essay, your 
expansion factor just from going 10 point font to 12 point font and from going single space to double space is almost tripling the length of your paper. In fact, the answer would be 28.8 times 10. And 28.8 times 10 is going to be, uh, it'll be about 28 or 29 pages. So let's just put that there. So when I put times 10, 28.8 times 10 is equal to, no, it's 2.88 times 10. 2.88 times 10 is equal to 28.8. And so it's about 28.8 .8 pages. So I'd say it's somehow 28 or 29 pages. Now, it's also still an approximation because, you know, if you had something which is a 10-page essay, it's not really necessarily 10 pages exactly. Okay. Oh, I see, by the way, some people are saying like, oh, hang on, isn't double spacing three halves instead of two? Well, it depends. Actually, if you think about what double spacing means, double spacing means doubling the space. I actually tried this. The reason I was curious is because I was like, does this actually work? So I went and got a document in Google Docs, because as you know, that's like a standard of a word processing application as you can get. So I got like a, it was an 11 page document in Google Docs and I changed it from 10 point to 12 point and I changed it from single space to double spaced and the length, the length actually basically tripled. It was really, really interesting. Uh, I want to correct this first before I go on and tell more jokes about the 10 point and 12 point. So back to this thing, it's not really 28 to 29. The 28 is not quite right. You see, because if it's a 10 page paper, one way to make a 10 page paper is to have a nine pages and a tiny little bit of text on the 10th page, right? So the 10 page paper is like it's using nine point tiny, tiny bit of text, like nine pages and a tiny bit of text, all the way to 10 pages full. So if I want to get a range, what would I do? Well, I need to now multiply 2.88 by nine. That would give me the beginning of this range. What's that? Does anyone know what is 2.88 times nine? Any particular efficient, any particularly efficient ways to do this? Uh, I don't know. I guess we can try multiplying it, and then we might find something interesting as we do so. So I'm going to rewrite it this way: two point eight eight times nine. Nine times eight is seventy-two. Hope we don't make a mistake. Seventy-two plus seven is seventy-nine. Nine times two is eighteen. Eighteen plus seven is twenty-five. So it looks like twenty-five point nine two. And that seems like it might be reasonable, because if I think about it, it's like, it's a close to like 9 times 3-ish, right? 25.92. Another thing I often do to double check this is if I multiply by 9, the answer should be a multiple of 9. So I add up the digits, 2 plus 5 plus 9 plus 2, and I see if that's divisible by 9. That's a divisibility trick for, for, for 9. And 2 plus 5 plus 2 is 9, plus another 9, of course, it's a multiple of 9. So I now know that the answer is between 25.92 pages and this 28.8 pages. 25.92 pages would come across as 26 pages, because if I wrote 25.92 pages, I used 26 pieces of paper. And so the answer is that it would be somewhere between 26 and 29 pages. How many of you were very surprised by how, lar how large the answer was? Was anyone really surprised that somehow if you, if you just all you do is you double space and then you change from 10 point to 12 point, it's like, boom, triple as long. Actually, I was surprised. I was like, I didn't realize that if you just change from 10 point to 12 point, you do more than times 1.2. It's times 1.44. This is actually pretty, pretty interesting. Then do you know what happens if you try to turn in your English essay in 20 point font instead? If you do like from 10 point font to 20 point font, is not just twice as long. What happens? 10 point font to 20 point font, it's going to be like times four. This also tells you, you know, like if you just used 13 point font, if you use 13 point font instead of 10 point font, you just made your paper 69% longer. Please do not use this to cheat on your school homework. I already see some people saying, uh, yeah, there's some people talking about their school homework. This is not telling you how to cheat on your school homework and make, uh, make your things look longer than they are. Uh, I was just simply saying that something that's very interesting is when you're looking at the amount of space that some things take up, the font size scales, the font size affects the space quadratically. It's just like how if you buy pizzas, like a 10 inch pizza and a 12 inch pizza, the 12-inch pizza is 44% bigger. All right, 
So that was the fun question. Maybe I'll say a few comments about, you know, why was I even thinking about this? Like, what does this question have to do with anything? So um, actually what I've been doing, as some of you know, is as some of you know, I've been working on trying to make an app to go and fight COVID-19. And so we were just making our iPhone version of the app. For the iPhone, as some of you know, we already released it for, for Android phones. And the, the iPhone version, the iPhone version is something which um, iPhones somehow don't let you do a lot of things in the background. That's what it's called. So we had to do some stuff in the foreground. And we had to make a screen that would be power saving. And it turns out that on the modern newest iPhones, if the screen has black colors on it, black pixels, then those don't use any energy at all. So we were actually paying a lot of attention to how many pixels we had on on the screen. And there was just an observation that when you go and change the font size from 10 point to 12 point, the number of pixels that are not black changes by the square of you know, 10 point to 12 point, which is the, it changes by extra 44%. And that might explain, if any of you are curious, why some of those screens, like sometimes there are those always on displays. Has anyone noticed that some of those always on displays use really, really, really skinny letters? They actually, what they do is they go and make the letters, you know, bigger, but they use them, they make them really skinny instead of also making them thicker. And that's exactly because they don't want to pay this quadratic factor of power usage. All right. So that's what this has to do with like with real life. So um, hopefully you found this question somewhat interesting. It has some direct application the next time that you write your English essay. It also explains to you why these power saving things on your phones are designed that way. And hopefully we also had a little bit of fun thinking about proportional reasoning. There was a question on one of my daily live streams. Why do you care about ratios? Well, here's something that ratios become really useful for. With that, let's move into the last part of this, uh, of this daily, or the, of this weekly show. And that happens to just be random questions and answers. So now what, we, what we'll do here is I have a bunch of different interfaces. I'm just opening it up on the other one. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll try to figure out what kind of questions people might be interested in. And these are not math questions. Here's where I answer questions that are just general things about learning math or math or other things. What do we have here today? Q&A time. Yes, I see that uh, Cody Tang says, yay, Q&A. That's how I feel too. I think that this is a very interesting thing where we, can, where we can answer all of these questions. Oh, I see that. I think somebody just asked, do you film at a studio in your house? So I'll be honest. Actually, this is not my house. We're filming at a studio at the, at the office that makes all of the online courses that we run. Um, we actually do run an entire series of online courses, Daily Challenge with Posh and Lo, and this is just the studio where we film it all. We are actually able to operate in this studio because uh, the state of Pennsylvania actually considered, they, they sent a letter considering that what we do to be an essential business. Um, essential business in the, is in the sense that actually we're making this app to help stop the spread of COVID-19. So we are actually able to operate here. But I will tell you, I'm, 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 uh, I'll tell you, I'm following very strict social distancing rules. I am the only person in the entire office right now. Okay. What else do we have here? More questions. Ah, huh. So I see that somebody says that they tried this thing in Google Docs and they only got 23. Here's something I want to suggest. So if you were doing this single spacing to double spacing and also changing from the font size from 10 points to 12 points in Google Docs for a 10 page document, something that's good to know is that actually the default line spacing in Google Docs appears to be 1.15 because people seem to think that looks better. So you, you actually need to set it to the normal 10 point first. More questions. Ah, somebody has asked, is there a cameraman? Yes, there is. Hi, I'm the cameraman. So that's what you may have seen as the show was starting. If you happen to tune in around, around 8 o'clock, what you may have seen is the cameraman was turning on the camera and then running over to turn on the microphone and then running over to become the man in front of the camera too. What else do we have here? Hmm. Oh, neat. So the typical weeb asks, how do you get good at quick math? I think that if you want to be good at quick math, it actually helps to understand a lot of math too. It's just like how what you saw me do when I multiplied a number by nine, I wanted to go and make sure that we didn't get into a trouble where the answer was wrong. And the way I made sure is I used something else I knew in math called divisibility by nine trick. And so if you know a bunch of those tricks, you will also be good at quick math. So I think I'm saying, if you're good at math, and then you do a bunch of interesting hard math problems, then you'll also be good at quick math. I see there was another question, which is not quite about math, but also interesting. 
asking, what is your computer model? Well, that's a deep question. The reason that's a deep question is because there are a lot of different computers here. We have a Chromebook, which is helping me to see the kinds of things that you guys are asking. We also have here, uh, it's a tablet computer, a computer that I can draw on. It happens to be a Lenovo ThinkPad uh, Yoga X1. But what's more important is that the streaming computer that's putting everything together to send it over to YouTube, the model of that, the model of that computer is it was put together from parts. And you, you can actually go and buy all the different parts you would need to put in a computer and plug them together. It's sort of just like playing Legos with uh, graphics cards. Why not? OK, what else do we have? Oh, somebody asked what parts. Uh, I can tell you what parts. So we decided to put together, I mean, this, if you're a computer uh, not like, like, like I am, uh, we put together like an 8-core AMD processor, one of those new, new AMD processors, so it can do a lot of computation. We have, I think it's a Radeon RX 580. It's a, video, it's, a, it's a graphics card that's really, really good at playing video games, except that what we use it for is to play the video game called Ask Math Anything. We basically use it to do all our video editing, and we use it to put this show on the internet. Those are the two most important parts, to be perfectly honest. What else do we have here? Mm. Ooh, Kyle, somebody named Kyle has asked, what are you afraid of? Thanks, Professor Lowe, this is Kyle. What am I afraid of? Honestly, what I'm afraid of is that we people will cause great damage to our civilization. I guess that's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm afraid of. Is somehow people are really creative, people are really interesting, but also, unfortunately, sometimes the decisions that we make as people or collectively are not great. So that's what I'm afraid of, and I, I'd like to see what we can do to try to contribute to that. Thanks for watching this live stream. In that sense, this is helping me, you know, reach a few more people. What else do we have here? Hmm. Where is Poe's water cup? Cool kid, you are so sharp. The where is my water cup? Is unfortunately, it's all the way over there at my other desk. So unfortunately, my water cup is not here at the moment. And that's in part because I was scrambling doing a bunch of things with our Novid app all the way up until the beginning of this live stream, and I didn't have time to bring my water cup over here. Thanks for your consideration. Hmm. More questions. Ooh, neat. Stephen Ma, was math invented or discovered? The person you should be asking is not me. You should be asking the people in those UFOs that the United States Navy found. You know what I mean? What I'm referring to is that somehow um, people often ask, is math something that people discovered or if they invented it. And the real reason, the real way to know is just to ask a bunch of outer space aliens. And if the outer space aliens also think that pi is really interesting, then math was discovered. And I bet that the outer space aliens do think that, do, do find a lot of the same things that we have found in math. Either, I mean, otherwise there would be no way that they could have flown all those UFOs around here. Okay, I don't actually know if those are legit. I don't know if those are real outer space aliens. Uh, that's out of my depth. I actually don't happen to know much about extraterrestrial life. But what I'm just referring to is that I think the fundamental concepts of math are fundamental. And we as people are discovering them at some point. So I guess I'm of the opinion that math is discovered as opposed to invented. Let's see, what else do we have here? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Somebody has asked, is it okay to feel lonely even though I have my family? That's a really interesting and a very deep question. I think that there are different definitions of loneliness, right? Loneliness in some sense is something that you're longing for. And it is, it's wonderful that you have your family. Actually, that's a great thing. Uh, some people, unfortunately, don't have their family. So that's a great thing that you already have. But when we talk about you know, feeling lonely, there might be other kinds of things, other kinds of interactions that you seek. Uh, maybe in some sense, not having school to go to is not so much fun because there aren't those people you'd normally be talking to all the time. So I'd say it's completely normal to feel like you're missing some kinds of interactions that you'd be liking to have. But don't, don't forget your family. Your family somehow will always be with you. And at some point, you know, you'll be, you'll be older and you'll, you'll even be like, gee, I wonder how my family's doing these days. Okay, more questions. What do we have here? Hmm. <laughs> you guys seem to really want to know how I'm recording all this stuff. What microphone model do you have? So what we use here is we use something called a Zoom H6. 
Zoom, as you know, is well known for uh, producing the video call equipment, that uh, video call software that everyone uses. No, actually, it's a different Zoom. So there's, there's actually a different Zoom which makes microphones. And those happen to be microphones that are really, really good for doing like uh, any sort of, uh, I guess, maybe more official or more professional video work. All right. What, what, what kind of all these questions? These are some pretty interesting questions you guys are having here. Ah, I like this one too. The collector YT Roblox asked, is math a language? I would say yes. So if you think about how we're able to make any sort of deductions in mathematics, it's really only because we found a way to express all the things we want to think about. So math is the language that lets us express ideas. If you didn't have this language, you just wouldn't be able to do any math at all. On the other hand, a language is only a way of writing things down. For example, if I said, oh, come on, I can learn English, it's easy. Any five-year-old learns English. But how many of those five-year-olds are writing 10-page essays? Probably very few. And ultimately, there's one thing to learn the language in a basic way, and there's another thing to master the language. So I think our hope here is that we're all trying to become Shakespeare in math. What else do we have? Hmm. <laughs> so, oh, El Feng, you're good. When was the last time you had a haircut? I definitely need a haircut. Uh, the last time I had a haircut, let's see. So it was before Pennsylvania shut down. So Pennsylvania shut down in the middle of March. Uh, so, so probably the last time I had a, uh, the, probably, probably the last time I had a haircut was probably around the beginning of March or the end of February. It's getting pretty long, so hopefully I'll find some other way to get a haircut soon. Uh, to be honest, I was actually thinking of waiting until after those math counts collaborations that I did um, yesterday, the day before, and the day before that. So you might see like a, a different kind of hair, but I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing: like I will get a haircut, but I will not dye it green. Okay, what other questions can we get here? Hmm. Oh, an interesting like economics question. Andrew Zhao, do you think that in the future the dollar bill would be worth more or less than now? That answer I can give. Unfortunately, the dollar bill will be worth less in the future. But that's mainly because right now, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government is, finding, is, is having to find ways to provide people with more money. I mean, you might think, like, how can it be that everyone's suddenly getting thousands of dollars because, you know, where did the thousands of dollars come from if nobody's working to earn them? So unfortunately, it's because we will make, we'll print more money. You know, money comes out of a printer. It's just very hard to buy that printer. That printer is run by the government. And so as more money is printed, the value of that dollar bill is going to go down. So that's a relatively easy, answer, easy question to answer. If you want something that, whose value is definitely going to go up, I can tell you something whose value will definitely go up is a barrel of oil. Because the last I heard, it used to be that the price of the barrel of oil was a negative number. And presumably, it will not stay a negative number forever. The only problem is, as I said in the previous live stream, if you buy some barrels of oil and put them in your basement, that's a very bad idea. More questions. Hmm. Oh, Leona. Leona asked, when did you start the daily challenge with Po Shen Lo? Well, if you're referring to the daily live streams that we're doing for free on YouTube, those things started on March 16th, which is a Monday. And that was basically the day that uh, we saw that some schools were starting to get cancelled. And so I said, let me do this and see what we can do. It might be fun. If you're talking about the online course, which is the daily challenge with Po Shen Lo, the lessons that we have, that started basically one year ago also. Sorry, not, not also. That started one year ago. Um, and that was because we found out that there were people in America who seemed to want to learn math in a different way. And so it's been running for a year. Other questions. What else do we have? Ah, I see that somebody has asked, what's Novid's progress on the iPhone? A bit of me almost wants to run over and grab the iPhone that's plugged into the other computer over there and pull it over and just show you. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm right back. So the, the fun thing about you know, actually doing a live stream is that you can actually answer questions that people ask. So this is an iPhone. It's an iPhone. And actually, this is why we were even caring about font sizes. Because what you see here is a lock screen. 
So I've just opened it up. And this is the, this is the app on an iPhone. I don't know if you can actually see any of this. But uh, what we have here is that this happens to be the Novid app on the iPhone. Uh, if you have the Novid app for the Android phone, you've been able to see it's actually the same interface. Except that for the iPhone, the issue with iPhones is that you can't do it in the background, so it has to always be on. And so what our designers came up with is an awesome way to dim the screen and to make it so that somehow, you know, if you, if you, if you want to keep the app running, you can actually keep the app running without using up your screen. And if you want to open the app again, you just hold down on this thing, and it opens up. So yes, the answer is, what's the status of the app on the iPhone? I have an iPhone. See, it has an Apple on it. So I have an iPhone, and it happens to run the app. And uh, the, next, the next step for us, actually, is to just send this back to Apple. Uh, Apple already gave us some feedback. And so actually, based on the feedback, we're going to send it back. Our plan is to send it back to Apple tonight. We'll see. We'll see if we get that. OK. Oh, yeah, if, if people are wondering what kind of Apple this was, this was an uh, old Apple. Um, because we wanted to make sure that this app would work on all kinds of different devices. More questions. OK. Oh, yes. Huh. So I'm looking at all of these. Oh, wow. OK, somebody actually made a comment about, oh, that's a sad comment, actually. It's a, somebody said the oil price is from Canada. Everyone in Alberta is getting laid off, basically. So that is sad. Um, actually, unfortunately, a lot of the world is having these kinds of, of, of issues. And so I would say what we need to do is we need to come, and come together and try to find any idea we can to get everyone unstuck from this crisis. More questions. Hmm. Ah, I like this question. The oof asked, what is the definition of a nerd in your mind? You see, nerd is an interesting concept. To me, a nerd is somebody who nerds out over something, meaning that you think that a particular topic is so interesting that you'll get really deep into it. A nerd doesn't have to be someone who just nerds out about math. Some people nerd out over like Star Wars, right? You can, you can nerd out over your favorite movie, or you can nerd out over basketball. To me, a nerd is just something where you kind of go really deep onto some topic because you find it really, really interesting. It's a bit sad that sometimes people say like, oh, you know, nerds are not interesting. To me, that's just because that's the way that they're often portrayed in the, in the movies or on TV. And I can tell you an inter interesting story around that. So I actually care very much about having more people in the world, I guess, think that thinking about math or thinking about science are good things and things to be proud of. So I was once actually part of a, a group where we, we had a bunch of scientists and mathematicians who were brought together to talk to the people who write the screenplays, like what, what you will see on Hollywood um, next year. And so we all got together and we were supposed to help, uh, you know, help interact with these people who write the scripts for all of these Hollywood movies so that maybe the next year the movies would show the scientists and mathematicians in a bit, in a bit more positive light. But here's what happened. Uh, we, we were in a workshop. Workshop means let's make a pretend movie. And so we got an index card. And on this index card, you were supposed to draw a line down the middle. On the left side of the line, you were supposed to write down, put down uh, like all of the strengths of this particular character. We were designing characters. Like, what are their superpowers? And then on the other side of the, of the, of the note card, we were supposed to write down all their weaknesses. And then this got kind of interesting, because I was like, well, you know, the strengths is I'd like to have somebody who's like really clever and can think of lots of things. I asked, do you have to put a weakness? And the answer was yes. Actually, you have to put a weakness. It was just a rule of like how you make entertaining movies. And so that actually explains why if you turn on the TV or, or, or look online for movies or for TV shows, what you see is that oftentimes the person who's like somehow really, really smart is also insane or like has some other fundamental problem. It's just because that was required. But I'll tell you, it is not true in real life that if there are strengths, there definitely have to be weaknesses. Anything that's a weakness, you can go and spend time and improve on. And so the good news is that it's actually possible in real life to be a nerd and also get along with other people. Actually, let me hit uh, this next thing. Uh, somebody has been talking about Toastmasters. That's great. Toastmasters is a program that teaches you how to do public speaking. I don't mean program like a computer program. I mean like a thing that you would do that you, you participate in that would teach you how to speak in public. These are all valuable things to do. So to me, the nerd part of the nerd is something that's actually positive. It's that you got really deep into something. Uh, and the parts that are kind of added on as baggage are only because when people make a movie or make a TV show, they think that you have to both have positives and negatives, where in real life, you don't. More questions. 
<laughs> you guys seem to really care about the glasses. What glasses do I have? I don't know. What do I have? So these are, I mean, these are really old glasses. They're, they're, they're from a brand called Flexon. Uh, so Flexon is something that, you know, made glasses that were supposed to be able to be like, if you bend them, they come back. I got them that way because I got these glasses right when we first had kids a long time ago. And so uh, I wanted glasses that if my daughter picked up and then did something weird to, they would flex back. And somehow they're still here. Right. So yeah, yeah, that, that, was, that was what we have. And then if you take care of the things that you have, you know, they last, they last a long time. All right. What other questions do we have here? Hmm. <laughs> El Fung, you're hilarious. You said the new haircut is like 12 point to 1 point, uh, 12 point to 10 point. Yeah, I think my haircut, I probably need to reduce much more than a ratio of 1 divided by 1.2. Uh, I probably need to cut off like a good 30%. All right, what else do we have here? Hmm. Wow, these are such interesting questions. Okay, so I, I'm looking at all of these different things. It's like, yeah, okay. So, so, oh, and somebody also said it's 1 over 1.44. You're pretty quick. That's if you care about the areas. Yes, let's do this one. Gu Yu asked, what were you like in high school? Well, in high school, I think, and I'm glad you asked that question. I mean, in high school, I was a person who spent a lot of time doing math and a lot of time doing coding. I really enjoyed both of those things. I also took school seriously. I tried to be a good student. But when I was at school, I tried to make sure that I could get along with other people in the sense that it was important to me that I would be true to my values. I, I cared about certain things like studying and uh, trying to do my best in the academic endeavors that I was working on, whether they, like the competitions. So I wanted to do that. But I also wanted to understand other people and be understood by other people. And so if I was having a conversation with someone, I would try not to just like have a lousy conversation. I mean, I would never, another thing that's important is I would, there's no benefit in ever making someone feel bad. So if you, for example, know how to do some things, you don't need to let my, you don't need to make other people feel dumb. You know, like you can, actually it's, it's a funny thing. Sometimes there's a benefit in coming across as knowing less than what you actually know, because it's not, the world's not always a test. So you don't always need to be like trying to impress other people. But so, you know, in high school, I'd try to, I'd try to actually talk to all of these different people um, in often different walks of life. It, it, walks of life. It's like whoever I happen to sit next to in class. Um, and so I, I guess I thought it was always important to understand people and be understood by people while also valuing the things that I cared about, like doing academics. I, I wasn't very smooth, I would say. I mean, it's, it's not like I'm even very smooth now, but uh, learning how to interact with people is something that comes over practice. So yes, I think I, I cared about those things. I might not have been great at them, but over time I've kept continuing to do that. And if you ask like, did, was I really popular in school? I think people generally knew who I was. They knew me as somebody who was not a pain, uh, but at the same time, I was not the guy who everyone would be like, oh, that's the coolest guy in the school. No, but that also wasn't the most important thing at the time. But I'm gonna say that now, like today, now that I'm working on this Novid app, it's really interesting because like my high school is having its 20 year reunion. So that's like how long it's been since I've been in high school. And the, the, the people who have come out to go and help with what we're doing now with Novid, who I had known when I was in high school, I wasn't necessarily great friends with all of them, but all of these people come forward and they try to help. And so a, a thing to maybe keep in mind is that in high school, high school in America and maybe many other countries can be something where it feels like being popular is really important. I'm gonna give the advice that you don't have to be the most popular, but it's not bad to also be, I guess, regarded as a reasonable person by lots of people. And at some point, everyone's gonna grow up. And at some point in your life, maybe there'll be something that you're doing that you need help on. And then all these other people who you, know, who you knew in high school can turn out to be some of the most helpful people for you right now. Okay, other questions that we have here. <laughs> so Tony Master is asking, do I like banana bread or banana milk because I like bananas? Because somehow uh, a question that came in the live stream yesterday was, what should you do? What should you bring for a snack for math contest? And I said bananas. So personally, if you're asking me, I'll say to me, banana bread and banana milk, they kind of get dark, like they kind of turn brown-ish and then they get kind of mushy. I'm a fan of the banana when you just peel it and you just eat it. 
So to me, the, the, the benefit of the banana is that you can grab one and you can eat it. And you can even hold like three of them while you're late for your next thing. You guys have probably noticed by now, I'm always late for my next thing. And when you're late for your next thing, you can be holding three bananas walking across the university campus, eating one at a time, throwing them into trash cans as you go. And then by the time you get to the other side, you've had breakfast. Okay. Let's see. What else can we have here? Banana bread is not bad. I do agree with you. It's not bad. Banana bread is not bad. I'm just a big fan of the, the old-fashioned banana. Okay. What else do we have here? Huh. Oh, that's interesting. W Math asked, do you always use the same cartoony, bubbly font that you use, and why? I'm trying to understand what you might mean by cartoony bubbly font. Uh, maybe, do you mean like me writing in the cartoony bubbly font? Or do you mean like cartoony bubbly font in like the things that we happen to produce as our videos? I, I, I think I should say the answer is yes, we, always, we often use this. Like if it's my handwriting, what you see is my actual handwriting. That's just how I always write. And when we talk about like, you know, these kinds of, these kinds of live streams that we run, we do, we do generally try to use the same font for consistency. Okay, what else do we have? More questions. Hmm. Okay, let's hit this one. Kids 3D Academy, where did you learn coding? And I want to uh, explain, like, these questions I'm taking, I'm intentionally taking the questions that are about how to learn math, and maybe I explain it from you know, my own experience. And this one happens to be coding. Where did I learn coding? Actually, a lot of that was from me messing around by trying to make something. Uh, I would learn the most coding by looking at somebody else's program that was partially written. You know, like the iPhone app that I'm giving as an example, right? At some point, I had to go and learn how to program on this thing. And to learn how to program on this thing, what you do is you go and say, you know, is there somebody else who has programmed on this before? If so, then go look at their program and see what you do to change it if you wanted to make it do something else. And then you start to add one more feature after another feature after another feature. So I actually strongly recommend just like using that method to learn how to program. And people have asked about like Python or Java. Or, or Java. They're all useful. Actually, at this point, iPhones are, are programmed in a, in a language called Swift. And so that's just another language. But once you've learned a few, they're all the same. OK. Hmm. What else can we have here? Oh, this, this is interesting. Leona asked an interesting question. Um, do you think the coronavirus will completely disappear? Or will it roll around at a certain time every year? So here's what I think is going to happen to the coronavirus. I think that because it happens to be so deadly and, and, and because it happens to spread before you know you have it, these are some very bad ingredients that have caused us all to try to close down our society. So the coronavirus, COVID-19, is a fundamentally bad thing. Whenever there's something like that, people will try to make a vaccine. It's just like how there are vaccines for diseases like polio. Right. There, there, there's, there are some awful, awful diseases and people make vaccines so that people won't continue to get those particular diseases. COVID-19, I expect to be the same. So I expect that what will happen is that within maybe one year or two years, then there will be enough vaccine made for a lot of people to go and get uh, vaccinated. And that will cause the COVID-19 not to keep coming and repeating over and over again. In some sense, the most important thing to do is that we get this vaccine and then we roll this vaccine out worldwide. Because what will not work is if you vaccinate, like somehow, let's pretend, you know, half of the people in the world, and the other half of the people in the world don't get vaccinated. Then what could happen is COVID-19 could mutate into COVID-21. And then the new COVID-21 might be not blocked by the vaccine, and then suddenly it rolls out again over everybody. So in some sense, what our biggest priority is right now as a world is to figure out how to make a COVID-19 vaccine and figure out how to make it cheaply enough and to make enough of it that we can distribute it to everyone in the world. And then it will not keep rolling around. Okay, well, unfortunately we have, you know, unfortunately we have actually finished the time. Oh, somebody said, what monitor do you have? Please choose me for the end. I'll tell you what monitor we have. We have whatever 1080p monitors at 23 to 24 inches are on sale at any given time except that they are all IPS displays so that they can be mounted vertically as well. Bottom line is, that doesn't actually matter. We just go and get monitors that I can see you in so that I can tell you, I'll see you at the next live stream. The next live stream happens to not be tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday, but the next live stream is on Monday. And we'll be going back to the Ask Math Anything format. We won't be doing the, the, the Math Counts problems. Uh, we might collaborate with them again in the future, but we'll go back to the Ask Math Anything. So bring your math questions.
and I'll see you at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.